May 2017, a 22-year-old hacker who goes online by the name MalwareTech was pouring over lines of code in his bedroom in Afrocom, England. He was sifting through thousands of lines, but this was not unusual because he does this on a regular basis, reverse engineering malware. But this wasn't just any computer virus, this was the biggest malware the world had ever seen. And although he didn't know it yet, he was about to quite literally save the internet as we know it. And it all came down to one simple inconspicuous domain name. Domain names are like website addresses, like facebook.com or google.com. While ramaging through the malware code, he stumbled across a strange looking domain. It seemed out of place, but it was referenced multiple times throughout the code. He looked it up, and to his surprise, the domain wasn't registered to anyone, so he purchased it. What he didn't realize at the time, his actions would intervene with the plan of the people behind the deadliest ransomware virus the internet had ever seen. The wanna cry. The wanna cry attack. Wanna cry. The wanna cry. Wanna cry. The wanna cry cyber attack. Wanna cry attack. Wanna cry. Short for wanna decryptor or wanna decryptor 2.0. It was a ransomware attack that swept across the internet back in 2017 and it targeted specifically machines using Microsoft Windows systems. Once a machine was infected, it encrypted all files on the system, locking users out completely unless they paid. And here is the kicker, you didn't even have to click anything to get infected. Just having an unpatched version of Windows and your PC turned on and connected to the internet was enough. The attackers used a vulnerability in Windows called Eternal Blue, which had been leaked by a hacker group known as the Shadow Brokers just a month earlier. Using this exploit, the WannaCry ransomware was able to spread like wildfire, jumping from one machine to another without any user interaction. The first known case was reported by a Southeast Asian ISP at 7.44 am UTC, shortly after. Infections were detected in Latin America, and by 10.05 a.m., cases were spreading across Europe. Just a few hours later, at 12.39 p.m., 70% of all major Asian ISPs were infected, and by 3.28 p.m., the ransomware attack had taken over 65% of Latin American ISPs. WannaCry was spreading at an incredible rate. Before this, a ransomware had never moved so fast, or hit so many machines at once. Many businesses couldn't recover from the damage and were forced to shut down permanently. Others had to pause operations, and countless companies reported losses from hundreds of millions to billions of dollars. The malware didn't discriminate from small to medium-sized businesses, large enterprises, the private and public sectors, railways, healthcare, banks, police departments, ministries, energy companies, and ISPs. There seemed to be no end to the victims. To put it in perspective, within just three hours, the virus had spread to more than 11 countries, and by the end of the first day, it was detected in 74 countries. With no clear solution in sight, there was no say how the damage was gonna look like in the next few days, weeks, or even months. Ransomware is the type of malware that encrypts your files, making them inaccessible. The attacker then demands a payment to unlock them, usually in Bitcoin. In the case of WannaCry, once your system is infected, the next time you start your machine, you would be greeted by this wallpaper, along with pretty much all your images, music, documents, and videos, encrypted and inaccessible. The malware window comes with a set of instructions, in 28 different languages on how you can recover your files. Under the section called, Can I recover my files? The answer reads, Sure, we guarantee that you can recover all your files safely and easily, but you have not so enough time. The broken English is likely due to the message being first written in another language, suggesting that the hacker may not be a native English speaker. If you want to decrypt all your files, you need to pay. 
You only have three days to submit the payment. After that, the price will be doubled. Also, if you don't pay in seven days, you won't be able to recover your files forever. At the bottom, victims could see a demand of $300 in Bitcoin to a crypto wallet address, also how much time they have left until they lose all their data. What makes ransomware very destructive and malicious is that once your data is encrypted, there is no way to decrypt it unless the attacker provides the decryption key. Marcus Hitchens, known online as MalwareTech, began hacking as a teenager by age 15. He was active on underground forums, creating and selling malware. One of his well-known creations was Kronos, a banking trojan designed to steal login credentials. He marketed it to cyber criminals and managed botnets, operating firmly in the black hat community long before he became known for stopping WannaCry. By age 17, he became a popular figure in cybercrime circles. His strong coding skills allowed him not only to develop exploits, but also excel at malware analysis, which was a hobby of his. Even if he hadn't created a piece of malware himself, he enjoyed breaking it down to understand how it worked. So when reports of WannaCry began circulating in May 2017, Marcus Hitchens obtained a sample of the malware to analyze it. He ran it inside a virtual environment to safely observe its behavior. While digging through the code, one thing immediately stood out. A strange hard-coded domain name the malware was programmed to contact. This domain wasn't registered to anyone, so out of habit and thinking it might help him track the infection, he bought it for only $10.69. What he didn't realize at the time was that the simple move would accidentally trigger a built-in kill switch. The malware was designed to contact a specific domain before continuing its attack. If the domain didn't respond, meaning it was unregistered or offline, the malware would go ahead and encrypt the files on the infected machine. But if it responded, meaning it was registered, the malware would shut itself down and stop spreading. The hackers added this as a way to disable the malware remotely, either for testing purposes or maybe it was an oversight. Either way, they probably assumed no one would ever register the domain. When Marcus bought and activated it, every new infection began contacting the domain, so it active and immediately stopped. This move effectively disarmed WannaCry in the middle of its outbreak. On the other hand, if the hackers had programmed the malware to use dynamic or randomly generated domains or assigned a unique domain to each infected machine, it would have been nearly impossible to stop the spread with a single kill switch. Unknowingly, Hitchens' simple act of registering the domain arguably saved tens of thousands of computers and possibly billions of dollars in further damages. For a moment, Hitchens became a hero, hailed by the media as the hacker who saved the internet. But his story took an ironic turn. Investigators looked closer into his hacking background, and they uncovered a secret that Hitchens had hoped was long buried. His banking trojans that steal online banking credentials. A couple of months later, after the WannaCry ransomware attack, while attending a cybersecurity conference in Las Vegas, Hutchins was arrested by the FBI. The arrest created a divide in public opinion. Some saw him as a classic redemption story cut short. A young man who had turned away from cybercrime to protect the public. Others saw him as a reminder that in the world of hacking, the line between villain and hero is often razor thin. Hutchins would later plead guilty to charges related to his earlier activities but was ultimately spared prison time, largely because the judge acknowledged the extraordinary good he had done since then, including his role in stopping WannaCry. The story of Marcus Hitchens remains one of the strangest paradoxes in modern cybersecurity, a once shadowy hacker who accidentally became a global savior. Today, Marcus works as a cybersecurity researcher, focusing on malware analysis and threat detention.
using his past experience to help defend against the attacks he once helped to create.